Today on Hands On Photography, we're going to take a look at a free, a free video effect. Yeah, we're going to dive into the world of DaVinci Resolve and do a little funky video effect for you. It's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be so quick and easy. Anybody can do this. Y'all stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Tech experts Leo Laporte and Micah Sargent team up to answer all of your burning tech questions. From the latest gadgets to tried and true tech tips, Leo and Micah have the knowledge and expertise to help you get the most out of your technology. So whether you're a tech novice or a seasoned pro, join Leo and Micah each and every week on Ask the Tech Guys. Send your questions to ATG at twit.tv or join us each and every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific via Zoom. Just go to call.twit.tv. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Ant Pruitt, and today we're going to dive into the world of video effects using a very, very, very simple tool inside of the free, free video editor, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, today, we're just going to take a, the, uh, a look at previous concepts we talked about in the past here on the show. We talked about using um, mask to change the color of things inside of video. Uh, if you remember from the example, uh, we had me wearing a shirt and I literally just did a snap and the shirt changed color in the middle of the video. Well, we're going to build on that, if you will, this week. So today I have this cat footage here. So let me just play through it. I'll just hit play on the keyboard here and it shows where I color graded it. And then the eyes of said cat change color. Right. So how did I do that? How did I get the cat's eyes to go from this typical amberish color to green? Well, just like in the previous episode, we use mask, but inside of DaVinci Resolve, they are called power windows. It's essentially a mask. OK, so right now we're going from the uh, edit tab here inside of DaVinci Resolve and we're going to work on this footage over here. So we'll just go ahead and mark this as our endpoint that we're going to work with today is the same footage as the example footage there. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and click on the color tab down here at the bottom and it takes us into the color tab. Now I've already gone through the color grading process of this. Uh, if you take a look, see here at these node structures, um, I've already done a little primary balance and color and gave it some contrast and color space transform and even put a little bit of a film emulation LUT on here. So that's how it looked before. And this is now that it's been graded. OK, nothing to it. Right. So if we play through it, it's just the cat sitting there. He turns his head, whatever, you know. But I say, well, how can we just jazz this up? Let's change the eye color for the cat. Now, again, you're working with the node structure here and all of these are what's called serial nodes. You know, so what whatever this node is right here at the very beginning, that data is feeding into the next node and so on and so forth. Um, it just passes down the line. So it, it makes a difference as far as how you should work with the node structure uh, inside of DaVinci Resolve. And for here, I was thinking since I'm, I, I end the node tree with a film emulation LUT, I probably shouldn't put the color at the end if I want better control the, the, the the eye color of the cat at the end. So I'm going to put it one node before that, like right after the CST node. So I'll just click on this one and just tell it to add a node. So I'll do, I believe it's option S. Yes. Option S on the Mac is control S on the windows. And then I'll just go ahead and rename this just for kicks and giggles. And we'll say, this is the eyes. All right. So we know what we're working with. And again, when you pop inside of the color tab, you have a whole bunch of different windows. You got the curves window and the color warper and color picker, change the sharpness, uh, lots of tools. You even have um, this tracker window, which we'll get into momentarily. Um, but what we want is this window here. And this is for power windows. And if you notice here, there's a bunch of different shapes that you could use. You can manually draw your um, mask 
on your video, or you can select to use these different shapes. And since I'm using, uh, since I'm dealing with eyeballs here on the cat, why not just use a circular mask or a radio mask, if you will. So I'm going to click on this circle here, just like that. And that has added a mask onto the video footage. So let's go ahead and resize this because what I'm, whatever I do inside of the mask is what's going to be affected. So if I wanted to change the color, for example, and just make everything sort of this purplish magenta hue, everything inside of that mask is being affected. Everything outside of it is not. So we need to make it fit for our eyes here. So let's just reset that. Okay. So let's resize the mask like so and see if we can make it fit. And you'll notice there's a bunch of different little lines here. And these lines are used to, to make the mask a little bit more uh, feathered and soft around the edges. The closer um, they are, the more of a hard edge they are to each other. But, you know, as it gets further away, it starts to be more of a gradual feathering. So you use this outside line and that makes it a hard edge. We'll pull, pull it out like that. That sort of makes it blend in a little more. Okay. But again, we need to resize this. So let's resize it down to fit one of the eyes here. So just do it like that. Push it down like so. There we go. And that should be good enough, right? So now let's just change the color of the eye. So I'll go over here to our offset and just warp the color to how we see fit. Something like that. Now, again, if we're looking at this, it sort of looks like it's bleeding into to the, the cat's, the hair around the cat's eyes, the fur around his eyes. So we need to resize it a little bit more. And if you need to zoom in on the footage, feel free to do that. Just zoom in so you can get a better look. So let's just zoom in, resize this to fit better. Like so. And. That should work. Yeah, that should work. And granted, I could have done a pen tool and just drawn this in, but this is already there and it seems like it's a pretty quick fix, right? Now, let me show you again the feathering on it. So if I push this in like that, you notice the edge of it is a lot more um, harsh, if you will. So if I switched off the screen here, the mask goes away and you see the edges is a really, really harsh around the eye. We don't want that. We want it to be feathered out. So let's go back into it and just feather it out like so. And it makes it a little, a little more gradual like so. There, so that looks much better. All right, I'll shrink it down just a touch more there. All right, so now we have it on here. Cool. And if I go ahead and just hit play, he looks away. But now that left me with this green spot <laughs> right here when the cat turns his head. That's not going to work. So what should we do? Well, we can go back to right about here. And then we're going to basically do a motion tracking of this. And again, this is a free tool <laughs> inside of DaVinci Resolve. There's another tool similar to this in DaVinci Resolve, but that's only in the studio version. Maybe I'll show you that another day, but I know most of you folks are going to want to use the free tools to get started. But this is basically taking that same power window and just tracking it to whatever you need to track on the scene. So right now it is selected the eye and because it's got really good contrast, the motion tracking should do really, really well with tracking our subject here. So the next window here beside your power window, there's another little icon right there. So you just click on that and that is for the motion tracking. And it says the tracker window. Okay. And it's very easy to use. You have all of these different options here on the screen um, for, for your window, the stabilizer and the special effects. We're just going to use the actual power window. And if you look at these little marks here on the, on the top, uh, you have to go all the way back to the very first frame. Uh, you can just hit play to start tracking these two arrows will let you track it back and forth in the footage, which is a really, really cool tool. Um, I'm not going to track it all the way through, but we'll just do a forward track. We won't do a back track. So we'll just hit play and it'll think on the screen 
And you see it just locked onto the eyeball and boom, it's done. That was actually pretty quick. <laughs> Depending on your computer, it might take it a little bit longer, but dang, that was that gum quick. So let's just go ahead and track backwards too. Why not? So just forward and backwards, let it go. It's thinking and it's locked on there. It's done. All right. So now if I were to click off of that tracker window and just go back to the curves window that I normally have on the screen and I hit play, looks good. Turns this head and it stayed locked on. Isn't it so daggum cool? I mean, well, we can boost the color a little bit more here and change the saturation and really, really make it green. Or if we want to just make it red or something like that, we can do that. But I think the green is a little bit more obvious and sort of stands out more. Just makes it fun, if you will. Okay, so now the next problem here. Well, dang, Ant, the cat has two eyes. Why not change the color of both of the eyes? You can do that. So just go back to the tracker window. So now we have an, an additional mass that we want to add. We just click up here because it's a circle mass and it's got the little plus symbol there. Just click that and it adds another one. And granted, it kept the same color that we already selected. So we'll go ahead and just resize it. Make it fit better like so. Let's see. Is that got it now? And then just drag it over the eye. And again, if you need to zoom in, zoom in. It's okay. That's going to give it that little extra polish, you know, make it look good. Zoom in on it. My feather is a little too much because it's bleeding out. There we go. Something like that. That should work, right? Not bad. And then just zoom out. And now you have two masks on your screen for your subject. Now, uh, again, you need to motion track this. So we'll just go back to the same tracker window option here. And you notice there is no tracker data showing down here at the bottom the way it was showing for this other mask. So let's click back on this new mask right here. Hit the tracker window and just track it back and forth. There, that's done. And then if we play it back, looks good. It's locked on. Oh, well, might have to cut it off because right there it goes away. So this is a scenario where you need to tell it, all right, at a certain part of the frame, we want to cut it off. But that's another fine detail that maybe we can get into another day because today we are out of time. Hey, folks. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me each and every Thursday here on uh, Twit TV. Again, keep sharing the show hands on photography with all of your friends and families and at least two enemies. Uh, you can find our information on the website, twit.tv slash H O P. You'll see the subscription options. You'll see um, the previous episodes and the previous show notes, including some of our previous guests and all of their information and other tips and tricks there. And it should be quite useful for anybody that is wanting to get started in the world of photography, regardless of the, the, the phone that they have or the camera that they have. We, we just want you to get out there and shoot. And uh, thank you for continuing to support the show. Also, thank you to our fine members of Club Twit. You all really do help us out by supporting us financially um, when there's not any ad coverage or things like that. Your support in Club Twit does help supplement us here at twit studios and really does go a long way so check out club twit twit.tv slash club twit and join for as little as three dollars a month if you just want to support a single show but you can get a lot of different options if you join the full version of our club twit if you will for seven bucks a month, you get access to our discord you get access to additional content that uh we will um does, don't necessarily make it out to the public. Yeah, you even get access to our private shows. You know, we have our uh, exclusive Club Twitch shows such as Hands on Mac, Hands on Windows, uh, the Untitled Linux show, and now even Home Theater Geeks is back with Mr. Scott Wilkinson. It's pretty good stuff. But yeah, check us out, twit.tv slash Club Twit.
All right. Shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for always making me look and sound good here on the show. Shout out to you for your continued support. Safely create and dominate. And I shall see you next time. Take care. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twip, which costs seven bucks a month, or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.